up you guys in today's video I'm gonna be talking about the third mode of Olivier Messiaen's modes of limited transposition before I go on to that I want to invite you guys over to my patreon page where you can find all the actual theory about this mode you can also find different fingerings tabs and notation for this mode as well as the backing track that I use right at the beginning of the video so before I get on with the last I actually want to congratulate Raul Tisse on being the winner of this month's video sweepstakes on my Patreon account. And if you sign up to my $10 tier on Patreon, you can also win and choose a topic of your own. Now going on to the actual lesson, this is one of the scales that Holtworth likes to use that sounds a little bit more outside, a little bit more outside of that normal scalar diatonic type of sounding range. So it's a really good tool to sort of sound like Holtzworth in different sections. This is a nine note scale and it's almost like a crossbreed between the whole tone scale and the augmented scale. Now when looking at the actual intervallic construction, we have one, two, flat three, three, flat five, five, flat six, flat seven, seven, and we go back to the tonic. Now if you look at that, you can realize that there's just a ton of different chords that you can play this scale over. You have a major seven chord, dominant chords, you have minor seven chords, minor major seven chords, major seven sharp five, just really a whole bunch of different possibilities. Since there are so many different possibilities and this scale has such an outside sound, almost sort of like an augmented sound, again because it's almost like a cross between whole tone and augmented. So I actually like to apply this scale more like a tension building concept instead of something like a normal mode like the Lydian scale or something like that. So in my case I like to apply it over very vague or stagnant type of harmonies. The other place I like to apply it is in different dominant situations or altered dominant situations where the dominant chord is actually resolving to the one. So again, I'm just using it to create more tension and then finally resolve all that tension. Now, like I mentioned before, there's a whole bunch of different chords that you can find within this scale. You can find them all down here. I'm actually providing a whole chart of all of these chords, again, on my Patreon account. So you can find a whole table on there. Now, the final thing I want to talk about when using this scale is that it's actually very symmetrical. It repeats itself every major third. And that's gonna come in handy when visualizing it over the neck. Now this is partially good and partially not so great. It's partially good because it's gonna be easy to visualize in terms of movement. And it actually even looks cool when you're moving through the scale because it moves in a very particular type of fashion when applying some specific digitations and fingerings. But the negative part of this is that it's gonna sound so symmetric that it's gonna be very easy to recognize. So it's very important that you not just focus on the patterns, on the scale patterns, and they have different fingerings, but it's important for you to apply some different permutations, some different ways of phrasing this actual scale so that it doesn't sound like you're just playing the same thing on different strings. Now I'm just gonna show you guys a couple of my favorite and some of the most common fingerings for this scale. But I urge you guys to apply different permutations to it, like one, two, three, one, three, two, two, one, three, two, three, one, that type of thing. And also apply different ways of playing the scale. So you could do groups of four, groups of five, you could do different intervals like thirds, descending thirds, however you decide to play the scale. Just try not to play just straight up and down like I'm gonna show you in the next examples. These are just purely for digitation purposes. Okay, so the first shape I'm gonna show you is actually like a one, two, flat three type of thing and it sort of looks like the minor scale or the beginning of the minor scale. And then it just moves up the neck going from right to left. And then when you come back, it goes from left to right. That's why I say it looks kind of cool when you're moving right through the scale. <laughs> The next group of notes I'm going to show you is one, two, flat three, and three. So you're going to get four notes per string. It's going to give a nice, interesting kind of sound. The 
This next move is going to be just like a flat 7, 7, 1 if you're just looking at this note as the root. If not, you could just choose different roots. <laughs> This next type of fingering is going to be like a natural 7, 1, and then a 2. And again, I'm just going up and down. So remember to do like whole tour assess and juggle these notes around just to hide the source of the scale and to make it a little bit more interesting sounding instead of just making it so symmetrical sounding. <laughs> Right, that's it for this video remember you can follow me on all sorts of social media i'm on facebook i'm on instagram i'm also on patreon i want to thank all of my patreons for their support if it weren't for them these videos would be a lot harder to actually do i also want to invite you guys to my website juantonymusic.com so you can find all sorts of different private lesson packages which you can take via skype you can also find my book the art of scale weaving and my two instructional box sets with the guys from guitar tutorials all right thanks for watching